Hey everyone and welcome to the Retro Channel and welcome to the third and final part of the Commodore 64 troubleshooting series. So if you haven't seen the first two parts, I definitely recommend watching them first because everything that I've discussed in those, I'm going to assume that you already know. So let's get straight into it and bring out the oscilloscope. All right, so I've got the scope set up and we're just going to compare what the CPU looks like uh, on this board to a working board and just play spot the difference. There will be a bunch of images at the end of this video um, showing the CPU, the VIC and the PLA outputs. Obviously not the super PLA, the regular PLA because these generally don't fail. So if you want to see all the outputs that you'd expect to get, be sure to stick around after the video. I'm not going to include it here because the video will get incredibly long and no doubt incredibly repetitive. So we're just going to look for anything that looks suspect. And yeah, pin two already looks suspect. So we should see some activity and there's nothing there. Likewise, I think pin three. I'm going to go with what I said I was going to do and just desolder the CPU, considering I've got plenty of 6510s. We'll pull that out and see if that gives us any change. <laughs> Okay, is it going to work? No. Ah, um, well, I guess it could be the Vic. Okay, well, luckily I do actually have it on the short board that I kind of forgot I had. Um, so we can pull the Vic and the CPU. In fact, let's pull the CPU out of this one because it is already socketed. And we'll put this suspect one in and see if that works. Okay. So the CPU that was in this board did actually work, um, but I guess now it's in a socket. Yay. So we may as well pull the 6510 out of here. All right, let's swap the Vic around and see what it does. So with the Vic from our non-working board into our working board, that also works. Um, okay. Well, at least we've ruled out the CPU and the Vic. They are both working just fine. Uh, so we had pin two and pin three on the CPU. That looked wrong. All right, so we know that pin two and three on this CPU are the most suspect ones. So we should be seeing pulsing on both those pins and they're both just stuck high. Now looking at the schematic, 
Uh, pin two goes through this AND gate and pins nine and 10 are the inputs to that. And pin eight is the output that goes to the CPU. So the two inputs, one of them is fed by another pin on that AND gate, which is pin five, which is just high. Um, which I think is normal, and that's pin four. That's the the other input that goes with pin five. So pin six is the output of that. That's fine. Tracing back from the pin nine input, that goes back to the super PLA at pin 39. So we should be seeing pulsing there. And then that comes from the VIC at pin 12, which is also stuck high. We know the VIC and the CPU work. I doubt this AND gate is gonna be the problem. Um, it seems to be doing its job, which is ANDing two high signals together to create a high signal. So the other pin on the CPU, which is pin three, which is the interrupt request, that connects to pin 21 of U1, so the first CIA, which of course looks the same there. And that also is on pin eight of the CPU. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, oh, sorry, pin eight of the VIX. So there's a couple more suspects at this point. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be this and gate could be the super PLA or it could be a CIA. I'm still avoiding this super PLA. I mean, I'm happy to pull it out if I need to, but given that the CIA is a lot easier to get out and it's a lot easier for me to swap over, that's where I'm gonna start. If that doesn't work, I guess we go the super PLA, which means not only will I have to take the one off this board, but I'll also have to take one off the other board so we can swap them over. And you can't put these in a socket. I don't think they make a socket for a 64 pin dip like this. So definitely gonna try the CIA first. If that doesn't work, I probably will just take the, the LS08 out just because I can easily swap that over or even just put it in the Mini Pro programmer and just test it with that. Um, but yeah, I think, oh, what the hell, let's start with that. Maybe while I'm at it, I should test this 4066 that I put in, in the programmer. I'm pretty sure it can do that. It can do most basic logic. So let's pull that out and we'll test this and also this one. If that doesn't work, CIA. If that doesn't work, PLA. Yay. And what's funny is the CPU came out no problem and this little 14 pin package is giving me trouble. Go figure. Hopefully you can make this out on the camera. So let's test the, uh, the 74 LS08. So, so it's just 7408, here we go. Test, everything's normal. Not a big surprise. Let's just check this 4066 that I put in earlier. Test. Yep, everything's normal. All right, well, it's not those. I guess we go for the CIA and U1.
Okay, the socket is in. Now, do I put a working CIA in this board or do I put this CIA in a working board? I don't know. Um, let's grab a working CIA. Now, I'm not even gonna bother moving the camera yet. Because uh, I only have one camera, it does take a little bit to move it from here to in front of me. So um, maybe with the maybe with the slow income from Patreon, I'll spring out for a new camera one day. Ah. No way. Time to move the camera. <laughs> now I know this episode was mostly looking at oscilloscopes, but we couldn't just leave this board in a non-working state. So we swapped the CPU, some logic. Um, thankfully we didn't have to swap the Super PLA because swapping that CIA chip, would you look at that? It's working, it's freaking working. Sorry. Um, so, if you do want to look at the rest of the oscilloscope images, stick around because they'll be just after this video, but uh, that's about it from me. So, as always, thanks for watching the Retro Channel. Um, I hope this troubleshooting series helped you out or gave you some hope for fixing your own Commodore 64. Um, and until next time, thanks for watching. Bye. Yes. Eighty five eighty six sounds so weird.